Chapter 10. My ham at the ministry. Müzik sesini duyuyorsunuz değil mi? Yanımda düğün sarayımız salonu mu artık ne diyorlar? Sonunda ne olduğu için de yaz geldiği için. Jesus fucking hell yeah. Mr. Weasley woke them after only a few hours sleep. He used magic to pack up the tents and they left the campsite as quickly as possible, passing Mr. Roberts at the door of his cottage. Mr. Roberts had a strange dazed look about him and he waved them off with a vague Merry Christmas. <laughs> You'll be all right, said Mr. Weasley quietly as they marched off onto the moor. Sometimes, when a person's memory is modified, it makes him a bit disorientated for a while, and that was a big thing they had to make him forget. Demek ki bunun bir önemi varmış. Yani unutması gereken şey, unutması zor bir şey olduğu zaman unutturması daha zor oluyormuş. They heard urgent voices as they approached the spot where the port keys lay, pe büyük. And when they reached it, they found a, you know, virgül, virgül, virgül, devam ediyoruz. They found a great number of witches and wizards gathered around Basil, the keeper of the port keys, okay, all claim, claim your ring to get away from the campsite as quickly as possible. Böyle durumları hiç sevmiyorum. Böyle durumlar olabildiğince sona kalmaya falan çalışıyorum ben. O izdiham, ihtimalleri, o izdihamımsı durumlar falan çok tehlikeliler. Mr. Weasley had a hurried discussion with Basil. They joined the queue and were able to take an old rubber tire back to Stout Shed Hill before the sun had really risen. They walked back through Ottery Street or St. Catchpole and up the damp lane towered the burrow in the down light, taking very little because they were so exhausted and thinking longingly of their breakfast. As they rounded the corner and the barrel came into view, a cry called along the lane. Oh, thank goodness, thank goodness, Mrs. Weasley, who had evidently been waiting for them in the front yard, came running toward them, still wearing her bedroom slippers, her face pale and strained, a rolled up copy of the Daily Prophet clutched in her hand. Arthur, I've been so worried, so worried. She flung her arms around Mr. Weasley's neck and the daily prophet fell out of her limp hand onto the ground. Looking down, it is saw the headline, Scenes of Terror at the Quidditch World Cup, complete with a twinkling black and white photograph of the dark mark over the tree tops. You're all right, Mrs. Weasley muttered distractedly, releasing Mr. Weasley and staring around at them all with red eyes. You're alive, oh boys. And to everybody's surprise, she sees Fred and George and pull them both into such a tight hug that their heads banged together. Ouch, mom, you're strangling us. I should let you before you left, Mrs. Wizzy said, starting to sob. It's all I've been thinking about. What if you know who had got you? And the last thing I ever said to you was that you didn't. Şu an öyle bir şey hatırladım ki. Get in up, oh, oh, Fred, George. Böyle <gülüyor> gülmemem gereken yerlerde çok bir resim gökülüyor. Fred ölecek de birazcık o geldi. Hı. Come on now, Molly. We're all perfectly okay, said Mr. Weasley, suiting me. I'm afraid all me, Jack, is going to... Prizing her off the twins and leading her back toward the house. Bill, he added in an undertone, pick up that paper. I want to see what it says. When they were all crammed into the tiny kitchen and Harmony had made Mrs. Weasley a cup of very strong tea into which Mr. Weasley insisted on pouring a shot of Ogden's old fire whiskey, Bill handed his father the newspaper. Mr. Weasley scanned the front page while Percy looked over his shoulder. Sesini çıkarası ya sesim daha zorlaştı böyle. O sesi çok çıkarmamaya çalışacağım bundan sonra. I knew it, said Mr. Weasley heavily. Ministry blunders, culprits not apprehended, lacks security, dark wizards running unchecked, national disgrace. Who wrote this? Ah, of course, Rita Skeeter. That woman's got it in for the Ministry of Magic, said Percy furiously. Last week she was saying we're wasting our time quibbling about cauldron thickness when we should be stamping out vampires, as if it wasn't specifically stated in paragraph 12 of the guidelines for the treatment of non-wizard part humans. Do us a favor, Percy, said Bill, yawning, and shut up. 
a mansion, said Mr. Weasley, his eyes widening behind his glasses as he reached the bottom of the Daily Prophet article. Where, spluttered Mrs. Weasley, choking on her tea and whiskey, if I'd seen that, I'd have known you were alive. Not by name, said Mr. Weasley. Listen to this. If the terrified wizards and witches who waited breathlessly for news at the age of the wood expected reassurance from the Ministry of Magic, they were sadly disappointed. A ministry official emerged some time after the appearance of the dark market, alleging that nobody had been heard but refusing to give any more information. Whether this statement will be enough to quash the rumors that several bodies were removed from the woods an hour later remains to be seen. Oh, really? said Mr. Weasley in exasperation, handing the paper to Percy. Nobody was heard. What was I supposed to say? <laughs> rumors that several bodies were removed from the woods. Well, there certainly will be remorse now she's printed that. He heaved a deep sigh. Molly, I'm going to have to go into the office. This is going to take some smoothing over. I'll come with you, father, said Percy importantly. Mr. Crouch will need all hands on deck, and I can give him my cauldron report in person. He bustled out of the kitchen. Mrs. Weasley looked most upset. Arthur, you're supposed to be on holiday. This hasn't got anything to do with your office. Surely they can handle this without you. I've got to go, Molly, said Mr. Weasley. I've made things worse. I just change into my robes and I'll be off. Mrs. Weasley said very suddenly, unable to contain himself. Hedwig hasn't arrived with a letter for me, has she? Hedwig, dear, said Mrs. Weasley distractedly. No, no, there hasn't been any pause at all. Roland and Hermione looked curiously at Harry. With a meaningful look at both of them, he said, All right, if I go and dump my stuff in your room, Ron. Yeah, I th think I will too, said Ron at once. Hermione? Yes, she said quickly, and the three of them marched out of the kitchen and up the stairs. What's up, Harry, said Ron, the moment they had closed the door of the attic room behind them. There is something I haven't told you, Harry, said Trinchy Gage, I'm an old and we send me that. On Saturday morning, I woke up with my scar hurting again. Ron's and Harmony's reactions were almost exactly as Harry had imagined them back in his bedroom on private drive. Harmony gasped and started making suggestions at once, mentioning a number of reference books and everybody from Albus Dumbledore to Madame Pomfrey, the Hogwarts nurse. Ron simply looked dumbstruck. But he wasn't there, was he? You know who? I mean, last time your sky kept hurting, he was at Hogwarts, wasn't he? I'm sure he wasn't on private drive, said Harry, but I was dreaming about him, him and Peter, you know, warm tail. I can't remember all of it now, but they were plotting to kill someone. He had teetered for a moment on the verge of saying me, but couldn't bring himself to make Hermione look any more horrified than she already did. It was only a dream, said Ron bracingly, just a nightmare. Yeah, but was it, but was it, though? Yeah, but was it, though, said Harry, turning to look out of the window at the brightening sky. It's weird, isn't it? My scar hurts, and three days later the Death Eaters are on the march and Voldemort signs up in the sky again. Don't say his name, Ron hissed through gritted teeth. And remember what Professor Trelawney said, Harry went on, ignoring Ron at the end of last year. Professor Trelawney was their divination teacher at Hogwarts. Harmony's terrified look finished. <laughs> Is she... <laughs> Is she let out in the right the receives snort. Hani birden Hermione'nin bu terrified look'unun bir anda vanishlemesi böyle direkt Hermione'nin Profesör Trelawney'ye sövmeye başlamaya geçiş yapabilmesinin işareti olduğu için bu çok hızlı gerçekleşebildiği için komik. Böyle esprileri anlatacağım. Bunlar hiç komik olmayacak ben böyle anlatırken ama anlatacağım çünkü gerçek İngilizce. Oh, Harry, you aren't going to pay attention to anything that old fraud says. You weren't there, said Harry. You didn't hear her. This time was different, I told you. She went into a trance, a real one, and she said the Dark Lord would rise again, greater and more terrible than ever before. And he'd manage it because his servant was going to go back to him. And that night, Wormtail escaped.
there was a silence in which Ron fidgeted absent-mindedly with a hole in his Chudley Cannon's bedspread. Why were you asking if Hedwig had come, Harry Harmon asked. Are you expecting a letter? I told Sirius about my scar, said Harry, shrugging. I'm waiting for his answer. Good thinking, said Ron, his expression clearing. I bet Sirius will know what to do. I hoped he'd get back to me quickly, said Harry. But we don't know where Sirius is. He could be in Africa or somewhere, couldn't he, said Hermione, reasonably. Hedwig's not going to manage that journey in a few days. Yeah, I know, said Harry. But there was a leaden feeling in his stomach as he looked out of the window at the Hedwig free sky. Come and have a game of Quidditch in the orchard, Harry said Ron. Come on, three on three. Bill and Charlie and Fred and George will play. You can try out the Ronsky feint. Ron said Harmony in an I don't think you're being very really sensitive sort of voice. In an I don't think you're being very really sensitive sort of voice. Şu şurayı şey etmeden, boyamadan şey demedim. Şu hap harika bir gerçek İngilizce. Şuradan, şurası. I don't think you're being very really sensitive sort of voice. Orası şu <gülüyor> tirelerin olduğu yerler çok güzel bir gerçek İngilizce bu kadar. Ne yani böyle bir kelime yok. Ama var çünkü gerçek İngilizce. Harry doesn't want to play Quidditch right now. He's worried and he's tired. We all need to go to bed. <gülüyor> yeah, I want to play Quidditch said Harry suddenly. Hang on, I'll get my fireball. Burada quickly diyormuş gibi kalmış benim aklımda. Suddenly görünce bir anlık şaşırdım. Hermione left the room muttering something that sounded very much like boys. Neither Mr. Weasley nor Percy was at home much over the following week. Both left the house each morning before the rest of the family got up and returned well after dinner every night. It's been an absolute uproar, Percy told them importantly, importantly the Sunday evening before they were due to return to Hogwarts. Anam Hogwarts sonunda dönüyorlar. 167 days ago. I've been putting out fires all week. People keep sending howlers. And of course, if you don't open a holder straight away, it explodes. Scorch marks all over my desk and my best quill reduced to cinders. Why are they all sending holders? Asked Ginny, who was mending her copy of 1000 Magical Herbs and Fungi with spello tape on the rug in front of the living room fire. Complaining about security at the World Cup, said Percy. They want compensation for the ruined property. Mungus Fletcher's in a girl quiz. Me ama kendisiyle beşinci kitaba kadar konuşmayacağız. Bu adamı çok seviyorum. Mungus Fletcher's put in a claim for a twelve bedroom tent with an sweet jacuzzi, but I've got his number. I know for a fact he was sleeping under a cloak propped on sticks. Ne diyecektim ya? Bu Mungus Fletcher'da Peeves'in vücut bulmuş hali gibi bir şey. Aynen. Tam aynı değiller ama çok benziyorlar. Mrs. Weasley glanced at the grandfather clock in the corner. Harry liked this clock. It was completely useless if you wanted to know the time, but otherwise very informative. It had nine golden hands and each of them was engraved with one of the Weasley family's names. There were no numerals around the face, but descriptions of where each family member might be. Home, school, and work were there, but there was also traveling, laws, hospital, prison, and in the position where the number 12 would be on a normal clock, mortal peril. Eight of the hands were currently pointing to the home position, but Mr. Weasley's, which was the longest, was still pointing to work. Mrs. Weasley sighed. Your father hasn't had to go into the office on weekends since the days of you-know-who, she said. They're working him far too hard. His dinner is going to be ruined if he doesn't come home soon. Well, father feels it's got to make up for his mistake at the match, doesn't he, said Percy. If truth be told, he was a tad unwise to make a public statement without clearing it with his head of the apartment first. Don't you dare blame your father for what that fresh skitter woman wrote, said Mrs. Weasley, flaring up at once. Nasıl da güzel oldu. If that hadn't said anything, old Rita would just have said it was disgraceful that nobody from the ministry had commented, said Bill, who was playing chess with Ron. Rita Skeeter never makes anyone look good. Remember, she interviewed all the Green Ghosts' charm breakers once and called me a long-haired pillock. 
Well, it is a bit long, dear, said Mrs. Weasley gently. If you'd just let me follow. Böyle o geçişlerin hızlı olması bir anda sinirli Mrs. Weasley'nin böyle birden bilin saçı hakkında konuşması ve böyle bana bir kestirsen falan etmesi çok komik. Tamam mı? Cidden çok komik yani. Böyle anlatınca komik olmasa bile. No, mom. Rain lashed against the living room window. Hermione was immersed in the standard book of spells, grade four, copies of which Mrs. Weasley had bought for her, Harry and Ron in Diagon Alley. Charlie was donning a fireproof balaklava. Hep baklava diye isim geliyor. Bunun ne olduğuna bakacağım artık. Balaklava. Balaklava. Yün, yün başlık. Balaklava. Balaklava. <gülüyor> Tam baklava diyormuş gibi. Balaklava. Harry was polishing his fireball, the broomstick servicing kit Hermione had given him for his 13th birthday open at his feet. Fred and George were sitting in a far corner, quills out, talking in whispers, their heads bent over a piece of parchment. What are you two up to, said Mrs. Weasley sharply, her eyes on the twins. Homework, said Frey vaguely. Don't be ridiculous, you're still on holiday, said Mrs. Weasley. Yeah, we left it a bit late, said George. You're not by any chance writing out a new order form, are you? Said Mrs. Weasley shrewdly. You wouldn't be thinking of restarting Weasley's wizard wheezes by any chance? Now, Mom, said Fred, looking up at her, a pained look on his face. If the Hogwarts Express crashed tomorrow and George and I died, how would you feel to know that the last thing we ever heard from you was an unfounded accusation? <laughs> Bu accusation falan çok iyi, çok iyi, çok iyi. Biraz fazla güldüm değil mi zaten? Unfounded accusation. Bu accusation hani uzun bir kelime, bir de böyle biraz ciddi bir kelime. Ama normal bir diyalogda kullanılsa ya direkt böyle espriye çok elverişli bir kelime aynı zamanda. Onu kullan burada Fred. Ve Fred sen öleceksin. I'm sorry but cidden öleceksin. Everyone laughed, even Mrs. Weasley. Oh, your father's coming, she said suddenly, looking up at the clock again. Mr. Weasley's hand had suddenly spewed from work to traveling. A second later, it had shuddered to a halt on home with the others, and they heard him calling from the kitchen. Şimdi burada güzel bir bilgi mi edindik, öyle mi geliyor bana? Yine de söyleyeyim. Ee, birden work and traveling'e geçti sonra bir saniye sonra da eve gelmiş oldu. Demek ki buharlaşma bir saniye sürüyor. Bir, iki. Oradaki o boşluğu gördünüz. O boşlukta Dobby bıçağı ölecek. Bir sürü insan öldü aklıma geldi. It had shuddered to a hold on home with the others and they heard him calling from the kitchen. Coming Arthur called Mrs. Weasley hurrying out of the room. A few moments later, Mr. Weasley came into the warm living room carrying his dinner on a tray. He looked completely exhausted. Well, the fat's really in the fire now, he told Mrs. Weasley as he sat down in an armchair near the hearth and toyed unenthusiastically with his somewhat shriveled cauliflower. Cauliflower. Kelime çok uzun olmuş. Bunu kullansanız falan çok havalı olur bence eserlerde. Öyle bir yeri gelir mi bilmiyorum ama... It has skitters been ferreting around all week. Is in ferret şeyden bahsediyor. Marvel Comics. Looking for more ministry mess ups to report. And now she's found out about poor old Bertha going missing. So that'll be the headline in the prophet tomorrow. Ay, o da virgü yok. Virgül bir şey. Vurgu yok. Hep virgül diyesim geliyor vurgu diyeceğim yerine. Bir şeyler var orada ama. Bu prophet diyecek işte... Neydi dır dır cümüydü neydi onu diyecek falan işte aynı bu gazete isimlerini falan itali geziyor. I told Bugman he should have sent someone to look for her ages ago. Mr. Crouch has been saying it for weeks and weeks said Percy swiftly. Crouch is very lucky Rita hasn't found out about Winky said Mr. Weasley irritably. There it be a week's word of headlines in his house of being caught holding the wand that conjured the dark mark. Percy gayet güzel göt etti şu an. Her ne kadar böyle muhabbet of Percy göt oldu tarafından gitmediği için kimse of Percy göt oldu yapmayacaksa bile gayet güzel göt etti şu an Percy. I thought we were all agreed that that elf while irresponsible did not conjure the marks at Percy hotly. 
If you ask me, Mr. Crouch is very lucky no one at the Daily Prophet knows how mean he is to Al, said Harmony angrily. Now look here, Harmony, said Percy. A high-ranking Ministry of Official Life, Mr. Crouch, deserves uns unswerving obedience from his servants. His slave, you mean, said Harmony, her voice rising passionately, because he didn't pay Vinky, did he? I think you'd all better go upstairs and check that you packed properly, said Mrs. Weasley, breaking up the argument. Come on now, all of you. He repacked his broomstick servicing kit, put his fireball over his shoulder and went back upstairs with Ron. The rain sounded even louder at the top of the house, accompanied by loud whistlings and moans from the wind, not to mention sporadic howls from the ghoul who lived in the attic. Pigwidgeon began twittering and zooming around his cage when they entered. The sight of the half-packed trunks seemed to have sent him into a frenzy of excitement. Bunk him some old treats, said Ron, throwing a packet across the head. It might shut him up. He poked a few old threads through the bars of Pigwidgeon's cage, then turned to his trunk. Hedwig's cage stood next to it, still empty. It's been over a week, Harry said, looking at Hedwig's deserted perch. Ron, you don't recon Sirius has been caught, do you? Night would have been in the Daily Prophet, said Ron. The ministry would want to show they'd caught someone, wouldn't they? I know, guy talked. Yeah, I suppose. Look, here's the stuff mom got for you in Diagon Alley, and she's got some gold out of your vault for you, and she's washed all your socks. He heaved a pile of parcels onto Hedy's camp bed and dropped the money bag and a lot of socks next to it. Socks, socks, said Hedy. Hedy started on wrapping the shopping. Apart from the standard book of spells, Grade Four by Miranda Goshaug, he had a handful of new quills, a dozen rolls of parchment, and refuse for his potion making kit. He had been running low on spine of lionfish and essence of belladonna. Belia Donna. He was just peeling under weir into his cauldron when Ron made a loud noise of disgust behind him. What is that supposed to be? <laughs> he was holding up something that looked to Harry like a long maroon velvet dress. It had a moldy looking lace frill at the collar and matching lace cuffs. There was a knock on the door and Mrs. Weasley entered carrying an armful of freshly laundered Hogwarts robes. Here you are, she said, sorting them into two piles. Now, mind you, pack them properly so they don't crease. Brushmak, use the doksan besh nokta, doksan dokuz krease brushmak demek. Mom, you given me Ginny's new dress, said Ron, handing it out to her. Of course I haven't, said Mrs. Weasley. That's for you, dress robes. What, said Ron, looking horror-struck. Dress robes, repeated Mrs. Weasley. It says on your school list that you're supposed to have dress robes this year, robes for formal occasions. You've got to be kidding, said Ron in disbelief. I'm not wearing that, no way. Everyone wears them, Ron, said Mrs. Weasley crossly. They're all like that. Your father's got some for smart parties. Smart parties. I'll go starkers before I put that on, said Ron stupidly. Don't be so silly, said Mrs. Weasley. You've got to have dress robes. They're on your list. I got some for Harry too. Show him, Harry. In some trepidation, Harry opened the last parcel on his camp bed. It wasn't as bad as he had expected, however. His dress robes didn't have any lace on them at all. In fact, they were more or less the same as his school ones, except that they were bottle green instead of black. Şişe yeşili, bu bizim biraz şişesi yeşiliymiş. I thought... I thought they'd bring out the color of your eyes, dear, said Mrs. Weasley fondly. Well, they're okay, said Ron angrily, looking at Harry's robes. Why couldn't I have some like that? Because, well, I had to get yours second hand, and there wasn't a lot of choice, said Mrs. Weasley, flushing. Second hand. Harry looked away. He would willingly have split all the money in his gringos vault with the Weasleys, but he knew they would never take it. I'm never wearing them, Ron was saying. Stupidly, never. Fine, snapped Mrs. Weasley. Tam bir harmony fine oldu bu. Go naked. And Harry, make sure you get a picture of him. Goodness, goodness knows I could do with a love. Goodness knows. 
gap gerçek çok güzel İngilizce var burada. Godness demedi. God knows. Hani God knows diyeceğine goodness dedi. Hani böyle sanki God saf iyilik, şeytanda saf kötülük gibi böyle bir ön kabuller falan var. Özellikle Hristiyan teolojide e, bu goodness dediğimiz zaman God demiş oluyoruz bence. God saf iyilik. Goodness knows I could do with a love. She left the room slamming the door behind her. There was a funny spluttering noise from behind them. Pig Vision was choking on an over large old treat. Why is everything I own rubbish? said Ron furiously, striding across the room to unstick Pig Vision's beak. Yani bilmiyorum. Aşırı üzücü bence. Tamam yani cidden aşırı üzücü yani. Fuck the money. Fuck the kapitalizm ya. Fuck off yani. Fuck all of them ya. Cidden var ya. Yani cidden şu Ron'un babası nasıl çalışıyor da verdikleri para falan. Skandalıyız falan işte ya. Get the idea. Amık. Chapter 11. Aboard the Hogwarts Express. Hadi görüşürüz.